Um, I'm Neil Mortimer from the West Midlands Academic Health Science Network. I'm one of the two business managers working on the commercial support side. Um, sitting in this happy triangle between academia, business, and we use NHS as a shorthand, but the NHS isn't the only provider and commissioner of care uh, uh, in the country. Um, there's a little bit about the West Midlands. It kind of feeds back onto some of what uh, Ash just said. The CCG revenue allocation for 2013-14 was 6.5 billion. It will be less in four years' time. There's a population of five and a half million. It's a rich environment. If you want to research, whether that's from an applied or a theoretical research, or from a business point of view, to market test, you can go to the West Midlands and find lots and lots of rich people, poor people, white people, ethnic people, rural people, urban people, young people, old people. To find that many people with such a diverse population, our colleagues in big pharmaceutical industries tend to have to pilot and trial things in six or seven different places, and we're marketing the fact that just do it in the West Midlands. And actually, my street would be a good place to start because you've got all of those dots in it. There are 47 NHS organisations. I use the term organisation very loosely. And within those 47 NHS organisations, there are divisions and departments that don't know what each other are doing. So the idea that this NHS is this big corporate thing that's a potential big catch client. It's one of our SME colleagues said, I thought the NHS was a whale. And when I got up close, I realized it was a massive shoal of fish. Very useful to remember that when you're trying to do business with them. It's a big geographical patch. Over 100,000 professionals working in the NHS in the West Midlands. So one SME who's marketing to employers about something that adds value. How can we reduce your sickness absence rate? That's a good employer to start with. There are 550 medical tech companies and the supply chain providing over half a million different products. So it's a diverse but challenged market. This is slightly out of date, so the numbers are bigger, but just to give you a flavor of, of our relationship, um, we're working with over 600 companies in partnership with our colleagues at Medilink West Midlands and, and MidTech, and uh, Richard from Medilink's here later, so he can talk a bit more about their offer. We've got over 750 NHS employees working with us, and by working with us, that's working with us, working with our partners. We're hooking up researchers in universities with a frontline clinician to help them to really test and prove their research. But we're finding frontline clinicians, senior managers, technologists, life scientists employed in the NHS working with businesses, right from sort of Apple and Google life sciences to one and two man SMEs that we're, we're supporting. Um, We've got 85 innovations that we either have in flight or have supported in the last couple of years. Um, we've got an innovation platform, and I'll talk briefly about it, but that's part of a challenge that Ash just touched on. Um, I use more basic language. There's too many people with a solution looking for a problem. My dad, an engineer by background, there's too many people walking around the garage trying to mend the car with a 17 mil spanner and hoping to hell that what's wrong is a loose nut and it happens to be 17 mil. And if I get one more person coming up to me saying, I've got an app, what's it do? I don't know yet. Um, they're probably not top of my list to give them Ash's phone number. But with the Meridian Exchange, we allow people who've got those problems that Ash described to put the word out to people who either may have the solution or are the kind of partner who can help them to get that solution. And the big challenge the NHS has is it's so complex that often they think they're facing a problem and they're not. They're facing a symptom of a different problem. People have thrown money at the front door of A&E trying to avoid all those people going in through the front door and actually spending a bit more money on waking up people to more accessible pharmacist advice and making general practice more accessible is probably the biggest win to ease the pressure on ambulances and A&Es. So it's helping the NHS to describe the problem so entrepreneurs like you guys in this room don't run off with a solution to something that actually 
won't make a difference because the underlying problem will be still there. Um, we've created 13 jobs, uh, mostly in small businesses in the last couple of years. And with the Meridian, we've got 71 innovations. So within the Meridian platform, um, people can submit innovations and calls for innovation, pull and push. I'm an NHS organisation wanting to know how I can sort out this problem that young mums keep facing. Has anybody out there got an innovation? And you can be putting in there, I've got a tool that helps patients to interact with clinicians without having to get on the bus. Marrying those two up in a matchmaking service. But I've got a couple of observations and it, it kind of overlaps with and gives us slightly skewed perspective on some of what Ash said. Innovation ain't invention. Innovation is doing what you didn't used to do. So some of the best innovation, I was 20 years in the NHS um, and some of the most powerful transformations was just transplanting something that other industries had been doing for donkey's years. I came from, I was 10 years in the uh, leisure industry, in hospitality. And one of my first jobs was working out in nightclubs, casinos and cinemas and theatres, how to make sure that people getting from the ticket office to their seat had as much money taken off them as possible with putting the kiosks in the right place. None of that science, which has been around since the 1930s, had ever been applied to a health centre. Ever. So innovation isn't necessarily something new. My best example of innovation is shaving foam. And the Brazilian long-term unemployed guy that found out that putting a little bit of olive oil in shaving foam means that if a referee sprays a little line, within 30 seconds it's gone. But that's long enough to tell whether somebody's been cheating. And you watch the World Cup, that shaving foam thing, that's all it was. He, he patented it, put protection. Had a bit of vegetable oil, there's my copyright on it. And he's worth millions. An existing product translated into a new environment. But this is the big one, and it's, it's um, if I may, I'll be lifting your quote and, and using that one, because it's better than this one. But successful innovations start with a problem, not a, uh, start, with, uh, start with a problem, not an idea. And this is a big thing that touches on what I said. Who benefits, who pays, and does the benefit exceed the cost? There are 47 NHS organisations, most of whom have not got a pot to piddle in. But I've just <coughs> told you there's five and a half million people there. Best part of a million of them have got a long-term condition, diabetes, asthma. People are starting to put their hands in their pockets and not thinking about it, backdoor privatisation, but people are saying, actually, I use a smart watch to keep an eye on whether I'm getting a bit wobbly and whether I've walked enough. And people are starting to invest in things, particularly for their loved ones. The number of people over the age of 85 is trebling. Therefore, levels of dementia and people with fractured neck of femurs are, are, are going up significantly. So tools that help people to live with that, it may well be you've got potentially 47 customers if you try and flog it to the NHS. We've potentially got five and a half million customers if you're flogging it to the individuals, to parents, to patients, to carers, to families. So the obvious answer isn't to get the NHS to sign the checkbook because they're not very big checkbooks these days. Th and I'm, I don't want to say that means the NHS won't invest because the NHS has got loads of inefficiencies that you guys can help them to fix and help them to save money. And we've got innovations where hundred grand up front is saving three million pounds a year and that hundred grand is a very nice little ticket for a small medium enterprise who can then go on using support from us and our networks to get the word out <coughs> why don't the other hospitals want to save that three million a year I mentioned that with this funny triangle of, of business health and academia and the assumption in NHS England, who licenses, is that this will be about industry comes up with the solutions, academia proves that they work, and the NHS buys them. That's probably a pretty sound model. But we're already starting to see the green shoots of industry buying expertise from the NHS, or academia buying expertise from industry, or industry buying expertise. The market isn't a simple bi-directional thing. So those first two things, our Meridian Innovation and Adoption Service that's got a digital platform at the beginning. If, if you don't know about it, 
Um, meridian.wmahsn.org. We'll whiz it round with the notes from this if Martin can just tag it on. But it doesn't take long to register. Look at the challenges that the NHS has put out there. There are some challenges from industry and some from academia, but most of them come from the NHS. This is a problem I've got. Help. And that's the bit you can go, well, actually, I've got a solution that could be adapted to help that. Submit that innovation through Meridian. People can comment on it. They can give it stars. We go to six, a bit like Spinal Tap. Five stars isn't good enough for us. But it allows you to effectively crowdsource. And when you've got 100 doctors all going, that just really does not make sense to me, thinking of that patient group, maybe there's a bit of help with your product conceptualization or design. When things come out the other side of Meridian and we've got a problem that appears to have a solution mapped to it, that's when we pull together a partnership. And it can be any combination of NHS, industry, academia, patients, carers, co-production, co-design are critical in, in, in health. And sometimes you may be struggling to find a clinician to help to test your thinking or your product. You may actually need patients or carers or, or at-risk citizens we can help with that. But we're really good at helping to identify funding. And we have an explicit partnership with Mercia uh, and an SME innovation fund um, that, that we, um, we sponsor in, in partnership with Mercia, which is already helping a number of SMEs uh, in the West Midlands. Um, we also have a, a digital incubator in Birmingham. Um, I know we've got one colleague here who's, who's one of the businesses that's uh, resident within the Serendip incubator. Again, if you don't know about that and want to know more, Martin, are you happy to share my contact details? Yeah, yeah. And if anybody wants to know anything about any of this, just drop me an email or, or a text. Um, but we can also help to find and make markets. So we've got access to some patient groups who it's never occurred to them that actually, for a few quid, they could make a big difference to mum's life, whether it's Internet of Things, remote sensors, wearables. Um, but those are areas where we can help. How much for time, Martin? Um, so I mentioned Meridian. Um, some people will tell you Meridian's a website. Um, they'll usually have a black eye just after they've said that. Um, Meridian's a service. And there's a portal at the front of it, and there's a quite significantly sophisticated digital engine sitting underneath it. But it's got lots of these things called people within the service as well. Um, I'm one, Richard's one, and we've got lots of others. We've got intellectual property support. So MidTech was originally established for NHS organisations to protect any intellectual property with a view to commercialising, whether it's trademarking, patenting, copywriting, intellectual property, non-disclosure agreements, and expertise. Don't waste your money applying for a patent. That is not protectable, because it's a generic thing, and you can't copy that. That sort of advice... Midtech are now part of the HSN family, and as such, our members, and you are all our members, because we get some funding from NHS England, which allows us to offer the service to all of you. NHS and academic institutions can pay a bit more for enhanced services, but you can access them. <coughs> so if you submit an innovation through Meridian, before it's published, it's vetted. And one of the people that vets it is one of the people from the Intellectual Property Support saying, for God's sake, don't put that out on the World Wide Web. You want to protect that first. Otherwise, you'll mysteriously see your idea patented over in Huangzhou province or somewhere else. We also have an industry gateway. Very rarely does one entity have all the answers. And a lot of the time, it's about forging partnerships, sometimes helping, helping customers... NHS or others, does anybody know of a business that's good at X and Y and Z? And Medilink, uh, I won't go into any detail, Richard's here, um, you know, have the ability through a huge network of, of, of businesses in the health sector um, to help make connections. And it's silly things like um, we've got an awful lot of clinicians developing apps. No offence to app developers or clinicians, but I'm getting an awful lot of We've got an app, what's it do? I don't know. Or, I've got an app, it does this. Yeah, but you already do that. Is it cheaper or better? No, but it's shiny, and it's on my iPhone. Um, but sometimes, it does look good. 
But there's a very strong sense of the Jeremy Clarkson mindset about some of these. So you look at the graphics interface and somebody's gone, graphic design, how hard can it be? And it looks, use the technical term, crap. And maybe, just maybe, what they need is support in graphic design. Or sound engineers. Or people who are really red hot on interoperability. Or data security. Or cloud interfacing. They may need partnerships. And one of the things that Medilink can provide is an encyclopedic network that can help to signpost people with mutual benefit. And then, MidTech can help to make sure there's NDA so that everybody's making sure they get the benefit they deserve. We've got networks and services. We've got the West Midlands Health Informatics Network, which you're sitting in the middle of now, that, that, that IDH support us with. We've got a mental health innovation network. We've got a long-term conditions network. But at the heart of it sits a web interface where people with problems can describe them and people with solutions can pitch them. And optimally, you will have an innovation that matches one of those campaigns. You've got an innovation that can help people living with dementia to remain independent and live in their own homes and not have their children being sectioned because they're going out of their mind with worry. You may have an innovation that doesn't meet an initial campaign, but you are confident that it actually does meet an unmet need. You can submit your innovation anyway. It doesn't need to be associated with an existing campaign. It's a good way of getting your product, your service, in the face of frontline clinicians, including opinion leaders, medical directors and directors of nursing, health scientists in laboratories and pathology services, and managers and finance directors and HR directors. And it helps us to map through to opportunities and we can go, ah, there's an SBRI for that, despite what Neil said. And I, I have to agree, there has been an inconsistency in recent years with the ethos behind what does and doesn't get through SBRI. And we are starting to work more closely with the people behind <coughs> SBRI to make sure that we don't get anomalies like, um, I mean, we can't touch that because it might be successful and generate revenue for the UK by saving lives. No, no, we're not interested. Uh, clearly, I, I may be paraphrasing in a correctly, but there are other funding routes. Um, if you want to giggle on this momentous day, my fellow Americans, we, we've just had a Brexit referendum. Since when, um, we've just pulled in 150,000 euros. Um, we think we've got another about 100,000 euros. Which is, which is about £100,000 at the moment, isn't it? Um, coming in in the next few months. The door hasn't closed on the EU as a funding route. The European Innovation Technology Fund is still open for business for 2017 and 2018 because the earliest we can leave is March 2019. We've got partnerships with, with you know, venture capital and investors. We've got good relationships with NHS England. We had an innovative collaboration between industry, the NHS, and the police about a really innovative approach to crisis care. We pulled down 1.8 million for that collaboration from NHS England. Money is usually not the hardest thing to fix when it comes to getting a solution in the hands of the people who benefit from it. So do have a look at Meridian. It's free to register. Any hiccups, just click on the <coughs> links to, to contact us. Do make the most of WIN. You will meet people within the West Midlands Informatics Network that you won't meet otherwise. It's one of the rare places where I can see a, an entrepreneur having a chinwag with an internationally eminent clinician or researcher or the, or the chairman of a, of a significant patient representative group. So you can catalyze things. We've got a mental <coughs> health innovation network. If you want to know any more about that, there's my email address. And do get in touch. Thank you. you with a passion you will never fully understand. I can't remember. Um, no, I, 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 I can't. So, for example, there's a campaign on there that's come from the medical director of one of the largest mental health trusts in the country. 
that says, I've got all this data and I don't know who's going to get sick. There must be some way through digital innovation of using the data I've got to determine those people who are quite likely to go into crisis in the near future. That was a campaign, and I've just mentioned the crisis care test bed with, with West Midlands Police <coughs> and commercial partners. That's an example of one. There's another one about meds and management, which is pharmacists saying, I know that so many million pounds worth of drugs are flushed down the toilet every year. And so many people are admitted to hospital, despite having been prescribed the right drug, they didn't go and get it dispensed. Or when they got it, they didn't take it. Or they didn't take it properly. There's a joke in there about suppositories somewhere, isn't there? Um, and so we've got innovators looking at, um, could you use a QR or a barcode on packaging? And one of our other university colleagues um, is looking at avatars. So augmented reality, wave your smartphone in front of the uh, bottle of pills or the, or the cream, and a, a very attractive nurse, I'm assuming, will stand up and tell you why it's important to take it and what nasty things will happen if you don't, but how to do it properly. So those are just a couple of examples. Um, there, are, there are some about workforce well-being. Has anybody, there's this thing called CBT that we know can help people with their resilience, their ability to cope with pressure and stress and keep their mental well-being up. There are so many apps, I'm sick of the sight of them, that are all about mood and they're based on the principles of CBT. But so many of them are either written by good coders who think, oh, I've read a book on CBT. And as a result, the clinicians are going, I couldn't touch that with a barge pole, it's really not safe. Or you've got some written by people who really understand CBT and have thought, how hard can it be to write an app? And it's lumpy and it's ropey. An awful lot of them go, I just need to connect to the NHS database. Um, which one? Because I know of about 6,000. And they're all locked down tighter than a gnat's chill. So what's your information governance framework around that? So those are all sort of examples of the challenges and opportunities that are around. But in each of those situations, a little bit like Ash has said, not everybody's going to come up to us with a perfectly formed business offer that's just about to go global. You may need access to somebody who can explain why information governance in the NHS makes your eyebrows meet halfway down your nose because it's a mess. Or somebody can explain there are clinical safety issues with this and just doling out interventions, even if it's a talking therapy, what happens if somebody picks up a mood app who's actually suffering from a psychosis and goes out to do serious harm to themselves or others because they've been relying on an app that was in no way appropriate? But actually, to get those developers in a room with a consultant psychiatrist and a bunch of people recovering from psychosis, boy, can that design get good. And those are some of the things that we can facilitate where we, we add a, new, a unique value as far as I know. I mean, uh, I just want to qualify. I think that's something that's uh, working with the uh, near and dear. Uh, it's a good example of a five minute conversation with me about a catch up call about where, we, where we're at. Kind of resulted in three months worth of headache, relief. You know, Neil connected us with Apple Health regarding with Sam from, from oh, Apple. Yeah. And basically, I was talking to Neil, Neil said, Yeah, yeah I've used it. Yeah, and, and I mean, we mention Apple because everybody's <coughs> heard of them. But, you know, one of the other entrep entrepreneurs that's, uh, that's in Serendip and, and making use of the digital incubator there, um, he blew our trumpet at an event last year. But within a week of meeting him, I'd got him an invitation to Apple's European HQ to sit down with their head of architecture for iOS to talk about how their, their architecture could really, really lever all the benefits of, of iOS devices and a meeting with the uh, technical lead for Watson in the cloud at IBM. Those are connections that can often be, how the hell do you know who these people are, let alone 
get them. For some reason, and it's, it's not so much a brag, we've just positioned ourselves in the right place where we can do that. And actually, one of those resulted in investment into that business from one of the partners that we introduced them to. And they hadn't actually gone there for investment. But that, that other big global multinational said, actually, you helping to answer these questions adds a value to us. So we're going to put a bit of investment in. Okay. Thanks for your time.